Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Professor Shiladitya Rakshit and I am representing Professor Gudmundur Eriksson. The topic for today is the commission set up under the United Nations for the protection of the rights of women. Now, what are the introduction and the learning outcomes? Firstly, it is basically to know the historical and the socio-political reasons for the creation of the juristic body. Second, to assess the need for individual body catering to the socio-political and economic needs of women across the world. And thirdly, appreciate the nature of the commission for women as a holistic and an autonomous body catering to the rights of women across the world. The United Nations Commission for the Enforcement of the Rights of Women was established in 1940s because for the simple reason that in the course of time, it has been seen that throughout history, women have been subjugated, they have been given an inferior status compared to men, as well as certain institutions, political and religious, have been able to successfully deprive them of fundamental rights. Even today, women are subject to discrimination in all stages of life, be it income, education, health and participation in society. They are particularly vulnerable to specific violence such as gender-based violence for such as well as human trafficking. Now the establishment of the commission of the status of woman is also known as the CSW. It was established by the ECOSOC in 1946 and its mandate was expanded in 1996. The objectives of CSW were basically to protection of women in conflict areas, arbitrary arrests of women, death and torture of women in custody, sexual slavery, forceful eviction of women for natural habitats in conflict zones. Their methods of work would spread multi-wise throughout the year and it was basically aimed in engaging discussions for the implementation of programs, basically engagement in health issues, eradication of poverty, protection of women in conflict zones. Like any other body, this commission strives for an equal podium for participation of men and women in the area of human rights. Now, what is the communication procedure? One may ask that with so many countries in the world, how are uh, complaints, appeals and petitions before the commission the status of women relating to alleged violation of human rights filed? Now, the answer is very, very simple. There are certain guidelines and there are certain considerations which have to be given as far as violations of human rights across the world is concerned. Because it is observed that there are certain discriminatory practices against women which are prevalent in the world and this is required for the purposes for the development of strategies for the promotion of gender equality. No decisions can take place on the merit of communications that are submitted to it. No provision of an avenue for the redressal of individual grievances such that of CEDAW. So it is not the same as that of CEDAW. It is a different body of example. Examples of issues which are addressed by the communication are basically the same which I have reiterated in the beginning. Basically, to prevent women being subjugated by 
economic and state run forces to victimization against abuses in custody and especially catering to the safety, protection and security of women to those in the various afflicted conflicting zones of the world. There are certain threats which are sometimes made to women especially to withdraw complaints which have been filed by them because they were victims of sexual violence. There is also some things which have to be addressed by the communication. Basically domestic violence, forced marriage and marital rape, uh, virginity testing and contemporary forms of slavery which are emerging nowadays including trafficking in women and girls, sexual harassment for example, which is prevalent in workplaces are also important. Apart from violations to the woman's body, there are certain other aspects which the commission looks into. One is that there should be equality of pay and also that there should not be no discrimination against women who are immigrating to different paths for certain reasons. At one time it tries to protect and preserve the individual dignities of a woman. At the second time it also tries its level best to give humanitarian aid to women in various conflicting situations. So the methods of work is basically focusing on one priority theme based on the famous Beijing declaration and a platform of action of the outcome of the 23rd special session of General Assembly. Secondly, to bring in member states to hold a high level talk and share their own field experiences. Third, evaluating progress in implementing agreed conclusions from previous sessions as a review themes. It also convenes interactive panel discussions on steps and initiatives to accelerate implementations and measures to build capacities for mainstreaming gender equality across policies. Because as you know that policies which are made by nations differ from country to country. Apart from this, it also considers in closed meeting the report of its working group. Working groups are basically set up to assess how far these policies these decisions which have been taken by the government, which have been taken in the commission in this meeting have been implemented. And thereby helping women in trying to resolve issues in various capacities. It is also very pertinent to note with a slight sense of humor that it encourages the celebration of Women's Day on 8th March if it falls within its sessions. So the question now arises that what are the outcomes? The principal outcome of the commission was that the status of agreed conclusions of the priority themes of each year have to be implemented. The principal output of the commission was basically agreed upon that women across the world must have the same rights, the same amount of protection and the same access to areas of education, healthcare and other benefits which are enjoyed by their male counterparts. So it basically not only takes into consideration government bodies but also relevant stakeholders, 
and make sure that whatever is discussed in their own bodies are implemented in the international, national, the state and the region level. At its 59th session, which was held around 9 to 20th March 2015, the Commission adopted a political declaration on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of the fourth World Conference on Women. It was known as the Millennium Development Goals and on that basis certain agreed conclusions were drawn upon. The question arises as what is a Millennium Development Goal? The Millennium Development Goal on MDG was basically that if resolutions were taken, those goals had to be adopted. So therefore, the MDG reached a momentous conclusion and it also helped to accelerate the women's and the commission's movement forward. The aims were basically to build a strong foundation for reflecting gender equality the empowerment of women and the human rights of women and girls in post-2015 development agenda, the agreed conclusions and the adopted by the Commission on the status of women at the conclusion of its 50th session. Apart from these, the introductory part which talks from paragraph 1 to 41 sets out existing commitments on gender equality. The empowerment of women and women and girls full enjoyment of basic human rights. And not only that, it tries to analyze progress and tries to fill in the various gaps and challenges which emerge in the process of achieving the MDGs and tries to bring about a stability in the unequal power balance which exists between men and women across the world. This is done by looking into opportunities, discriminatory laws, social norms, harmful customary and contemporary practices and gender stereotypes as well as violence against women and girls. The Commission in paragraph 42 urges governments and other stakeholders to take action in five very important areas. A, realizing women's and girls full enjoyment of all human rights. Two, strengthening the enabling environment for gender equality and the empowerment of women. Three, maximizing investments in gender equality, for example, setting up a school for boys, boys and girls. And D, strengthening the evidence base for gender equality and empowerment of women. It is also to be noted that at times it is important that women should not only be beneficiaries, but should also participate in decision making, which will be able to strengthen their accountability. Apart from that, there are certain other human rights which are there and it calls for the full implementation of the convention of elimination of discrimination against women. Secondly, the Beijing platform for action and the program of action on international conference on population and developmental actions, which aims to address the multiple 
and the intersecting factors contributing to women's and girls' poverty. Because that is a major issue even in the 21st century. And majorly, this commission was set up to prevent any form of violence as well as the protection of sexual and reproductive health, reproductive rights, redistribute unpaid care work, to promote rights and access to service infrastructures. And also to highlight actions to benefit particular groups of women and girls, including women human rights defenders, indigenous women, girls and migrants. Now, this is a part of section A. Section B looks into the broader environment. It includes provisions to ensure that global trade, financial and investment agreements, macro as well as micro, also is inclusive of gender equality. Actions calling for integration of a gender perspective response to climate change for women and participation in all aspects of peace building. Thus, apart from these aspects, it can well be summarized that the role of women in media is also important because it brings into certain issues which otherwise do not see the light of the day. Apart from this, there are certain other sections which looks into participation as well as leadership in all its forms. So basically, the commission was set up and more of its goals have been achieved. Last and not the least, it also talks about a multi-year program of work and there are certain priority themes, especially challenges achievements in the implementation of the Millennium Goals. So in order to summarize and to look into the review theme, it talks about access and participation of women and girls to education, training, science and technology, including for the promotion of women's equal access to full employment and decent work from the 54th session of the CSW. In 2015, for example, review and appraisal of the implementation of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action and outcomes of the 23rd special session of the General Assembly was taken. In order to fully summarize the action plan of the CSW, it basically talks about a platform for action achievement of gender equality and empowerment of women as well as opportunities for strengthening gender roles and gender equality especially to those victims who are suffering from HIV. Thus, in order to summarize it, it is essential to note that this commission was set up under the aegis of the United Nations. It is a commission in its ambit which is far and wider than the provisions of CEDAW and the aim of it is to ensure that women and men are not discriminated, protect women against any forms of servitude, torture and violence and ensure that women also get participation not only to healthcare, education and other benefits, but also to decision making aspects of the governments and the countries which they belong to.
थैंक यू